Okay, boys and girls, we took the back off the speaker cabinet uh, because I need to deal with the input jack down there. But um, I figured while we're in here, we'll take a look at the construction. The first thing that surprises me is the rear braces. They don't go all the way to the edge. They're three-quarter of the way across, seven-eighths of the way across. Why? I don't know. Um, I mean, if I were doing this, I would just run it all the way across, but the cabinet is fairly well braced. I'm not worried about it breaking. I just think that's weird. Very weird. Our ports there are metal, which is fine. Most new ones will be using plastic. Um, and our drivers are CTS. That's based on the speaker code there. This speaker code, we have 137, 7331. Then down here we have 03800-2400. That's our top and bottom driver, are like that. And then our middle driver, which has the custom logo on it. That one is 038-500500, which is, I think, the serial number. Should be. I think that would put it in 1970, if I'm not mistaken, but again, I'm not 100% sure. And then we have 137000 something or other. So, yeah, I'm going to say this is 1970 based on that, but speaker code gurus, let me know if we're wrong. Um, nothing too much to fix here. We're just going to need to clean a little bit. Um, the only thing missing from the speaker cabinet that I can see is a one of these uh, silver washers that go on the screw. One of those was missing but everything else is there so we're just going to clean and polish the input jack make sure that it's corrosion free and it really gets a good grip on the cable if it doesn't, we'll replace it. This looks like a generic Switchcraft. The ones in the the ones in the um, amp looked different than the generic Switchcraft I became used to. But looking at how that sits, it looks like it might have been a little bit sprung, like somebody had pulled on it real hard. So we can probably, uh, you know, polish it up, and then we'll bend that tab and see if it's nice and springy, and we'll get a heck of a grip on our cable. And if it does then it's good and it can stay, and if it doesn't, it'll get replaced. So, yeah. Um, so we have a fiberglass insulation of some sort that follows the sides and the bottom, and there are pieces of insulation between the speakers and then all the way down the back of the rear of the cabinet. So, if you ever wanted to know what was in the back of one of these, now you know. And we're waiting on parts so we can service our amp head but I thought that was worth taking a quick look at it and we're gonna fix that like I say we're just going to take a little bit of uh, sandpaper and polish that end up and then make sure it grips very very well we need to polish inside there because that's where the negative terminal of course grabs on the ring and then the tip of our quarter inch jack there so there you go. And it was mounted on the plate down there. There's the plate. And there was a tooth washer in there to keep it from rotating and turning. So we'll put all that stuff back in and put it back together. Exciting stuff. Yeah, speaker cabinet technically wasn't broken, but I had to know what speakers we had. I figured we had the CTS. That's what all the cab catalog said. And we do. Not bad. Could be worse. Somebody could have stolen the CTS speakers and stuck a generic lousy replacement in here. We'll say pyramid. There you go. That would be a generic lousy replacement. Okay. See some. Holy crap. Look at all these screws. goodness.
electric screwdriver, yay!